Listening Fan Fiction presents History of a Teacher by Famous Fault, based on the manga Yu Gi Oh! and the book and movie series Harry Potter. Narrated for you by Sierra Steinbrecher. Chapter 1 Death. He woke screaming once again. The nightmares were still common even now, four years later. It was a cruel fate needing to wake up every night, having seen the most horrible moment in his life. At age 21, he should not be required to go to bed every night with that horrible feeling in his stomach. His only comfort was the presence of the soul inside the golden artifact around his neck. Yes, the pharaoh was still with him, but that was never what was supposed to have happened. And it was something Yugi had to live through every night, over and over again. His nightmares didn't fade with time. On the contrary, they were so vivid that it was as if he had to live through those terrible events again and again. Now could you please stop screaming? You'll wake the other person's here. Take a, take a sleeping potion or something. The bed he was sleeping in murmured tiredly. At that point, Yugi was used to his bed complaints every time he woke up screaming. Not just the complaints of his bed, but all the chairs in his room in the leaky cauldron were always communicating their grievances too. For some reason, the furniture had taken a dislike to him. It wasn't just the furniture in this room. His previous room, room 11, had contained talking windows and mirrors. The mirror was always complaining about his hair and the windows about the fact that he always kept the curtains shut. He had soon switched rooms, but it had been no use. He guessed that it was because of the darkness that surrounded him. The magic of the shadows still obeyed the pharaoh within him. Neither the pharaoh nor the shadow magic should still have been around. Yugi had won, the gate had opened, and someone had interfered when they shouldn't have. A man with long white blonde hair had made sure that the Millennium items weren't destroyed. He had been unaware about doing so, for sure, but that wasn't what mattered. What mattered was that that man had felt power and had tried to destroy it before it became a threat, and by doing so, he saved that very same power he'd wished to exterminate. The only thing he had destroyed was Yugi's peace of mind and the lives of all his friends. Yugi turned on a lamp and got out of bed. He had long ago gotten rid of his pajamas with stars on them and nowadays slept in his black underwear. He got himself dressed and looked at his watch. It showed 4.45 in the morning. It was too early to go down for breakfast, but he didn't want to go back to sleep. Instead, he picked up a book that he had been reading, one of the many he had bought in Diagon Alley. This one was called Curses and Counter Curses by Professor Vindictus Viriden. He still hadn't found that one particular curse that had done so much damage in such a short amount of time. Then he came to a chapter called The Unforgivable Curses. That sounded promising. What the blonde man had done to him and his friends was unforgivable enough. There are three unforgivable curses. The Imperius Curse, the Cruciatus Curse, and the Killing Curse. That sounded promising. Yugi only half read the parts about the Imperius and Cruciatus curse and started to read more eager when he came to the killing curse. Immediate death. No visible cause of death. Forbidden. Lifetime in Azkaban. Green flash. No known counter curse. Green flash? Yugi thought and had no trouble recalling the terrible events haunting his dreams every night. Green flashes of light were all he had seen when the blonde man had started yelling strange words. I think we found a partner, Yugi mentally told the transparent ancient spirit sitting on the bed next to him. Looks like it. It is too much of a match for it not to be. Atem searched the text. Look. He pointed at some sentences in the book and started reading aloud. The killing curse is the only curse that immediately ends the life of the person hit with it. If it is the only one, it must be the one that he used. Yugi nodded. No wonder we didn't understand what was happening. He told his darker half and looked at the text. Who are you talking to? The bed muttered. Even if you have no desire to sleep, I know. Oh, shut up and sleep then. Yugi said and kicked one of the bed's posts. You could be a bit friendlier, you know. The bed just whined a bit about his mistreated post and went silent. Yugi picked up a bag and dug out a notebook while scribbling down the information in Japanese. So this is what we've got so far, Yugi told the Tem through the mind link, not wanting to upset the bed again. The ones that were present were Jonochi, Honda, Anzu, Otogi, Grandpa, Ryo, Ishizu, Merrick, Rishid, Kaiba, 
and Mokuba. The only survivors were Mokuba and Ryo. The rest was killed by a tall blonde man wearing a black cloak and a skull as a mask. He did it with a killing curse, most likely, because of the power he felt. The first one he hit was you, but you didn't die because you were already dead. Yugi stopped there. He had said this so often that he didn't start crying anymore, but he still didn't like it. Yugi, you should allow yourself to grieve properly. You try to distract yourself by trying to find their killer, but once you have properly grieved, you will be much more effective. It wasn't the first time that Atem had told Yugi that, but once again, Yugi didn't listen. I have already grieved. Now I just have to find the murderer. Listen, Atem, we have gotten this far not by grieving, but by action. Now we found another clue to what happened. I can't wait for the moment I see that piece of filth dead. Yugi, Atem said, shocked. Don't say that, it's not like you. You're changing Yugi, and it's not for the better. I'm more confident and stronger than ever before. So it depends on how you see it. Yugi snapped at that him. You are ruthless and harsh. You never smile anymore in a hunger for vengeance. Yugi glared at the transparent being next to him. Sounds familiar? Atem drew a deep breath and his scarlet eyes widened. Yugi! Atem was quiet for a while, trying to come up with a good reply. Yes, you are right. That was me. But it was your light that guided me back to the right track. But as you are now, you wouldn't have. You would have made it worse. You are not a light anymore. Yugi sighed and looked suddenly much more like the person that Tem had known before the massacre than he had for months. I know, but you were a good person. Otherwise, why would you have otherwise sacrificed yourself to save your people? Tem smiled a bit but didn't reply. He was just glad that Yugi had calmed down. Perhaps you'd better study for your next job. There aren't many days left. Adams shook his head a bit. I don't understand how all this has happened to us. Neither do I. Yugi whispered and picked up Hogwarts A History by Chronicles Punit. I'm becoming a teacher! A teacher at a school teaching magic! Yugi laughed a bit. Hope I make a better teacher than Chono! Yugi said with a shiver. Uh, Yugi, do you remember Ribbon? Adam asked Yugi. I don't know, Ribbon. At least, I don't think so. Oh, wait, you mean Miho Nosaka. I remember her. That was the girl Tristan had a crush on. We wrote her a puzzle. It's weird, though. I nearly don't remember that lesson at all. It was the same day Chono quit. Then it dawned on Yugi. Yeah! I mean, Atem, what did you do to her? <laughs> I showed the world her true face, Atem confessed. His eyes narrowed. Her looks match her personality nowadays. It's not a pleasant sight. Yugi laughed lowly. I don't been here. I know, Atem said, and it was exactly what troubled him. Are you sure of this, Dumbledore? Severus Snape asked the headmaster of Hogwarts. I understand the idea behind it, but I do not like him. He's dark, perhaps even as dark as the Dark Lord himself. Severus? Dumbledore said with a low voice to avoid calling the attention of the rest of the order. Darkness has many sides. The darkness of this young man comes from loss, much like the darkness you contain yourself. Despite he is simply a muggle, why would you fear him? Severus frowned. You do not honestly expect me to believe that this person is a mere muggle. Doesn't it all depend on how you interpret the term, Severus? Albus Dumbledore asked with a faint smile on his lips. A muggle is someone who is unable to use magic the way we do, Severus said, not thinking entirely through his words. Then he is a muggle by your standards. He didn't even know about the wizarding world until I introduced him to it, so I honestly don't understand why you were so against it, Severus. You are leading him straight into death. The Death Eaters will kill any muggle they find inside the castle when they try to get in. I might be the one having to kill him. It started with Bertha Jorgens, and this muggle will be next. Severus said, feeling frustrated. No, no, Severus. Are you starting to care for others now? This muggle might be able to stop many of the students becoming followers of Lord Voldemort. We could save many students by sacrificing one person. But people are rarely as harmless as they seem. I'm not heartless, Severus. I haven't chosen young Mr. Muto as a sacrificial lamb. There is some sort of strength in him which I hope will help us. 
Severus glared at the huge fireplace in number 12 Grimald Place. He knew that Albus Dumbledore could think in ways not many could, placing the group before the individual. Yet Severus Snape was not happy with the attitude the headmaster of Hogwarts had towards people he didn't know. He saw them as weapons rather than people. Severus, knowing what Dumbledore was up to, couldn't help but feel sorry for the new history of magic teacher despite his immediate dislike of him. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to make sure that Harry does not get expelled from Hogwarts. The headmaster was ready to leave the house and apparate when Snape called out, Dumbledore! What is it, Severus? The headmaster asked, looking somewhat impatient. What is he like? Do you mean young Mr. Muto? Why would you want to know? It's just that if I do not like him, it will be easier for me to watch him being killed, or even kill him when that time comes. Dumbledore looked at Snape for a moment. His impatience had vanished. I reckon you have no second thoughts about our agreement. No, I do not. I understand it is necessary. However, I've been preparing mentally. I want to prepare for the death of anyone else I know, or will get to know. Severus, you know that better than I do. Dumbledore said, the twinkle in his eyes nowhere to be seen. Diagon Alley was the most interesting place Yugi had ever been to. The problem was that he had no free access to it. He always had to wait for a witcher wizard to open the door in the courtyard by tapping the correct brick. Because Yugi owned no wand of his own, he wasn't able to open it himself. A week before he was to take the Hogwarts Express, he entered Diagon Alley once again. At this point, he had only visited Flourish and Blotz to learn more about the world he was currently residing in. Now he had to get ready for teaching at Hogwarts. He'd have to blend in as well as he could if he wanted to learn whom the blonde man was that had killed his friends. The first stop he made was at a shop next to Flourish and Blotz. It was Madame Malkin's robes for all occasions. Yugi wasn't stupid, and he knew he stood out, wearing the clothes he did. He got himself a casual black robe that would do for teaching, but he doubted he would actually use it. He liked his own style way too much. He wondered if he would be forced to wear these robes as a teacher, or if they all did it out of their own free will. He strayed some more through the streets, and got a lot of weird looks, despite the fact that most people could look straight over him, short as he was. He knew it was because of his hair and clothes, but he didn't care. When Yugi passed the Lavenders, that time smirked. What's so funny? Yugi demanded to know out loud. Atem had noticed the golden text on the sign for the first time. It read, Ollivanders, makers of fine wands since 382 BC. I'm approximately 2,600 years older, Atem said, and the two of them laughed together, almost like old times. Almost. On occasion, his thoughts wandered towards the bag with six of the Millennium items in his room at the League Cauldron, and didn't like the fact that he couldn't bring it along. He found a solution to that in twill fit and tattings. The cloth shop didn't only hold clothes, but also a number of small bags with an invisible extension charm on them. Eventually, he found a small brown leather necklace with a little scarlet bag to it. It was the kind of necklace people kept stones in. Just for the sake of it, he went into Ayup's Owl Emporium and watched all the owls. He didn't really need to keep one. He had no one to write to, anyway. However, he liked it in there. It was a dark place filled with soft hooting. Eventually, his worries about the Millennium Items became too much to bear, and he went back to the Leaky Cauldron. He directly put all the items in the little bag he had bought and hung it around his neck. He had just fastened the leather cord when someone knocked on the door to his room. He opened, and before him stood a tall man with a crooked nose and long white hair and beard. It was the man that had recognized the picture he had drawn of the murderer. However, this same man had not spilled a word about who or what this person was. Instead, he had been introduced to this entire new world. Welcome! Please come in, Yugi said and opened the door a bit further as an invite. Thank you. I'm sure you know I'm here for a reason, the old man said in a serious voice. You made it quite clear that you are a busy man, so I assume you do, Yugi said, sounding slightly hostile. Yugi, a damn side. The pharaoh could not understand how the cheery high school boy could have transformed it to this hostile man, because it was for certain that Yugi was not a child anymore. Yes, I'm here for a quite important reason. First of all, I'd like to inform you that I have a very bad reputation, and if I don't, I will soon get one. I'd just like to point out, I am no madman, nor am I dangerous. To most people. 
Nicky raised an eyebrow. Surely he had read the paper, the Daily Prophet. And even though he could fluently speak and understand English, reading was still quite hard. He had not understood the articles about the headmaster very well. He just knew that they weren't in Dumbledore's favor. Second of all, about what you are supposed to teach. There are no strict rules about that at our school. Every teacher teaches in his or her own way. It's all up to you. Third of all, have you ever heard about Lord Voldemort? Yuki shook his head. That name he had never heard before. Oh, I'm sorry. Have you ever heard about He Who Must Not Be Named or The Dark Lord? Now that rung a bell in Yugi's head. He nodded and said, I've heard a word or two. He was said to be an evil wizard, greedy for power, who believed that muggles were to serve the wizards of pure-blooded families. He rose to power 15 years ago, but died when one of his own spells rebounded on him. I picked up different things here and there. He didn't sound like a nice person. You have picked up things quite fast for someone newly introduced to the wizard world. Yugi gave a wry smile. He wasn't going to hide that he had tried to learn as much as possible. Dumbledore gave him a warm smile. I just want to warn you. The Dark Lord is not be spoken about in past tense, but now in present. Being a muggle, it will not be very safe for you at Hogwarts or in this world in general. If you wish, you can still leave before he returns to his full power and claims the lives of everyone he deems unworthy of being part of this world. The white-haired man almost looked as if he hoped Yugi would decline. Tell me one thing. This man that killed my friends, has he anything to do with this dark lord of yours? Yugi asked with a flicker in his eyes that hinted at anger. Dumbledore frowned, and for a moment Yugi thought he wasn't going to answer. Then... I must tell you the truth. Yes, he does. He is a member of a group called Death Eaters. They are Lord Voldemort's most loyal servants and are cruel and dangerous people. Yugi eyed the man in front of him. It made him feel uncomfortable that this man was so much taller, and as if the headmaster had read his thoughts, he sat down on the bed. The bed murmured, You are not going to wake me up screaming again, are you? Yugi gave the bed a kick, making it grunt. I deserved that! Dumbledore didn't seem the slightest surprised by the fact that the bed was talking. Have you been having nightmares? Yes, I have them often. Yugi felt no need to deny it, now that the bed had made it so obvious that he did. I relive the events that brought me here in the first place. It is not, how do you say, appreciated. He sighed and sat down on a wooden chair, putting his feet with the buckled boots on the desk and threw an arm over the backrest. Nightmares are something we all must deal with on occasion. However, when they overstay their welcome, we can get ourselves some help. He was a sleeping potion. Don't look so troubled. It's nothing like these weird pills you've got in the muggle world. Dumbledore gave the young man a little smile. Yugi was in no mood to small talk. About the issue with danger regarding the teaching job, I will not decline just because of these Death Eaters. I'll help you fight them, for what it's worth. Teach the children what you want. Remember that knowledge is the strongest power. The headmaster said and frowned a bit at his own words. Which brings us to the main reason for my visit. Yugi simply raised an eyebrow as encouragement for the long-bearded man to continue. You were no mere muggle. I could sense a deeper darkness than that the loss of your friends and family left you. I do, however, not think you want us harm. Besides, we have the same enemy. I just need to know that you make no threat to my students. Give me a sign I can rely on you. I've often been told that I'm too trusting, but I have always had a good reason to trust these people. Yugi gave a hard smile. I recognize that. I used to trust people. I learned the hard way that you can't always... Hmm. Yuki took a brief pause to debate with Adem. It's up to you, Adem said quietly. All right, let's make a deal. I tell you something about me that you'll find interesting as a sign of trust, but as a sign of your trust in return, I want you to tell me who the Death Eater was that killed my friends and family. I promise I will not kill or harm him in any other way unless in self-defense. Dumbledore looked amused, worried, curious, and serious all at the same time. Sounds fair enough. The Death Eater that killed your friends was most likely Lucius Malfoy. He is a high-ranked Death Eater that escaped Azkaban after the war- Azkaban? Yugi interrupted. Ah, yes. Azkaban is a prison, a prison for wizards. It has some methods I wish were not used. Ever heard about the Mentors? I cannot say I have, Yugi said, his interest awoken. They are soul-sucking creatures. They feed on fear, making people relive their worst memories. 
However, Lucius Malfoy escaped both Azkaban and them. Now he is Hogwarts governor, has high friend in the ministry, and keeps a good name by donating lots of money to charity and St. Mungo's Hospital. He's a dangerous opponent. There is one other thing. His son starts fifth year in Hogwarts this year. I hope you treat him equally well as the rest of the students. Yuki frowned. He was insulted. Sure, I seek revenge, but I know you can't blame the son for the sins of his father. Thank you, Yugi. In your case, it was your uncle. I do not believe that it was your father's fault. It wasn't. It was indeed Akhenaten that killed the villagers of Kol Elna. That's what I hoped you would say. Now then, what would interest me? Dumbledore said, interrupting their silent conversation. Me! Yugi sighed. Not sure how to begin. We are three in this conversation. Are we? Dumbledore said, if not surprised, amused. Yes, we are. Some years ago, I solved the puzzle. This puzzle. Yugi held up the Millennium Puzzle with two hands without taking it off, so Dumbledore could see. It took me eight years. When I solved the puzzle, I released an ancient spirit. <laughs> Ever since, he's been sharing my body, and he is my best friend. A brother, I guess. We were trying to find a way for him to move on when that Death Eater attacked us and removed that possibility. Dumbledore seemed more than interested, yet worried. You must realize that I need to think about the safety of my students. We have had a possessed teacher before, and it almost led to the death of a student. I fully understand. Dumbledore was, despite what some thought, no fool, and he could clearly hear and see the difference between the man, the boy he had hired, and this man standing before him. Especially the eyes made an obvious difference. They had been amethyst earlier. Now they were as red as blood. You are the spirit possessing young Mr. Muto, Dumbledore asked cautiously. The only type of possession he had ever dealt with were filled with fright and sorrow from the possessed side, and malice from the possessing side. Atem took his feet down from the desk and straightened his back. Folding his hands underneath his chin, he then placed his elbows on his knees and turned somber eyes on to Dumbledore. I would not exactly call it possessing. I have once pledged never to disobey his wishes, because I am well aware that this is his life, not mine. Once I broke that promise, and the consequences were so severe, I will never do it again. Atem's eyes narrowed in a mixture of guilt and hatred. What's your name? Dumbledore knew that with a name he would be able to learn a lot about this particular spirit. Atem chuckled slowly. I am not that easily fooled. You didn't know my name. Everything you want to know, you can ask me. But simply remember this. I'll do anything to protect my Hikari. Although Dumbledore had no idea what the last word meant, he understood that the spirit meant Yugi, and he picked up on the edge of sadness when the spirit said the word. You are the darkness that I and many others sense coming from Mr. Muto, Dumbledore noted. With a darkness that was greater than that of the Dark Lord, he couldn't trust the spirit very easily. Atem gave a short nod. I am. Um, when I was set free, I had no memory from what happened to me, and it was Yugi who kept me on the right track. While I was learning about origins of this item, I was told that an evil being had been sealed away within it. Atem hesitated the slightest. There was no need to inform the headmaster that there was more than one item. I thought they meant me. Now I know that I sacrificed my own life to lock away a dark power my people controlled. It was created for good, but it was too dangerous, too dark. The dark power was released with me, and I still control it. The power I control is what you sense. I don't use it, though. Too many have suffered at its hands. It hasn't always been just me who controlled those dark powers. However, others no longer have any access to them. Then you are... Dumbledore had to look for the word. A guardian, then. A time shook his head. Not really. But these powers will stand against the Dark Lord of yours. From what I've heard, you can use all the help you can get. All right, then. Dumbledore said, and did exactly what he was so well known for. He decided to trust the stranger with the spirit. I'll see you and Mr. Buto at Hogwarts, 1st of September. The headmaster turned and opened the door. He was just about to close it when Yugi called out, Wait! I still have a question! Yugi had one hand reaching out towards the headmaster, as if that would keep him there. What is it? Albus Dumbledore asked patiently, and for some reason Yuki had the feeling that the headmaster already knew what he was about to ask. The killing curse. Does it hurt? Avada Kedavra, does it hurt being killed like that? Did they 
suffer. Yugi had trouble finding the correct words, and to Atem's delight, he was nearly the innocent little boy he had come to know and love again. But he anxiously awaited Dumbledore's answer sitting in spirit form on the bed. I don't know. Only one person has ever been hit with the curse and survived it. He was just over a year at the time and does not remember it, so it isn't known how much it hurts. Dumbledore took a pause and turned to look at Yugi. But people die immediately, and I do not think they suffer. Thank you, Yugi said, and the headmaster closed the door behind him. <laughs>